So, currently at Stevenage Station and I'm getting the train to Peterborough to collect another car. So, exciting. And um, the guy that I'm buying it from is probably well known to quite a few people if you're in the British Leyland or um, Citroen groups. Uh, Keith Adams, who started uh, AR Online and is also editor of Parker's and previous editor of uh, Classic Car Weekly and Modern Classics and um, I think he's done a lot of stuff with things like Evo and Octane and stuff like that so yeah I've known Keith for 20 odd years and it's the second car I bought from him so uh, yeah looking forward to getting up there and seeing the car. So we're at Bauer, home of lots of magazines like Parker's and Land Rover Owners International. This is Keith's Audi A6 that he bought for eight hundred pounds. He's just picked me up from in the station. Picked me up from the station in. I have to say, it's pretty impressive, the money, 2.4 auto, and extremely clean inside, 100,000 miles. comes right I'm here with Keith Adams who's selling me my second car <laughs> well not my second car the second car he sold me and uh, I explained we know each other earlier on the on the camera it's been 20 odd years oh yeah yeah 20 years of uh, since uh, british leyland chat first british leyland yahoo groups wasn't it yes and um had our first get together in around 2001 at dale's dale's garage mm -hmm. and uh i think it's time for another one. Oh, it's got to be dale's up for it so yeah really of old so, times uh, okay well keith's gonna show me around the car so this is a Nissan Primera, uh, 1993, 2.0 LX. This was um, sold in the UK in the weird era when we had Botnar's dealerships going up against Nissan UK. Um, and so you had competing dealerships selling different types of Primeras um, with different badging, but effectively the same car. So this one is a Botnar spec car, which means Follow me in, in the camera. It is an LX, but low spec dashboard, um, no rev counter. It's got a fire breathing 115 horsepower engine, uh, but no rev counter. So rev sales, the sales reps would not have liked that. And if we wander around, I think I would believe that this is not original. No, <laughs> I don't think it is. I did notice that. Um, but Having 16V on the back of your car back in the early 90s was, was the thing. It, it sort of took over from having an eye badge. Um, so yeah, all reps, all self-respecting reps needed that kind of badge kudos with their cars. Unfortunately, rather offset by the uh, black bumpers. So, you know, kind of like, no point. Also, this is a, an option spoiler fitted by the dealer. Um, we've got some paint issues with that, but other than that, um, we walked around the car, it went in the usual places, but the, the guy that had it before me has had it from one year, um, and he had the welding done, it was quite an ugly job, but actually really, really solid. My MOT tester said it was a really nice job. And the only other place they tend to go, and this one went in the same place, I'll just close the door, is bottom of the front wing. Uh, bizarrely, the mud flap did exactly the job it shouldn't have done and trapped all the dirt behind the, the end of the wing. So I had to do a bit of a tidy up on that for the test. 
have a quick look under the bonnet. This is the bit that, uh, as I say, I might be wrong here, but I'm, you know, Neil will tell me. But I think this particular engine is related to the. Um, this would be related to the Sylvia and the 200 SX, I'm guessing, but obviously naturally aspirated. Yeah. Um, so it's the SR, the SR engine, but. Um, I think this is the, the, the single point injection, which yeah. is the SR20 Di. Single point injection. My son, who is um, well, he's 22 years old. He looked under the bonnet, assumed it was a carburetor, and I had to kind of like <laughs> put him right on that. But this particular car's got just a little over 50,000 miles on the clock. Uh, two owners from you, and uh, you know, obviously, haven't done much under bonnet prep with this. These are clean, they're, they're normally areas to go on these. So. Yeah. And, the, and the front panel also. That's not a bad shape, is it? It's also uh, normally a common area. So. so the guy that had it, interesting, this interesting chap, he was a... He was a patent lawyer and a really, really clever bloke. Um, and had no idea whatsoever about cleaning a car. So when we got the car, I mean, basically it, it had like 20 years worth of dust on it. The interior, you know, you patted the seat and a cloud came up, you know, it was just dust. The car's been garaged all its life. It's gone 500 miles between its last few MOTs. You know, it's hung up its driving gloves now, but it's a really, really sound car. It's um, got the full history with it. It's been serviced from new. The guy's done it every year. And uh, I think Neil's going to have a lot of fun with this. I would challenge anybody to find another Primera of this age with less than 50,000 miles on the clock. So there's a challenge. Comment below if you know of a Primera with less than 50,000 miles. Unless it's in a museum, and I'm sure someone out there will probably tell me they've got one. But um, yeah, I think it's a bit of a unicorn, this car. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, Keith. So there we go, walk around by Keith of the new Primera and uh, be my second, well not my second Primera, but the second Primera in my ownership currently. I've got my old GT as well. Uh, looking forward to going back to my teenage years. I actually had a 1.6 LX in white with the black bumpers when I was 19. So this is reliving my life 25 years ago. Right, let's get on the road. So, I've arrived home and uh, actually really nice car for 29 years old. Um, cruise back just over just under 70 miles 110 kilometers uh, drive back and uh, yeah cruise is really nice and um, handles quite nice as well so it's um, quite impressive really like Keith said it's not got a rev counter which is uh, a bit old school I think this is a 1992 and the uh, the Montego and the Sierra already had a rev counter on their sort of fleet models um, around 89, 1990 and the Cavalier around 92 so this was sort of quite behind I think the Premier only got rev counter on the uh, LX models uh, 96 so but it's got some other nice things like four electric windows and uh, uh, well <laughs> not much else actually oh it's got a it's got a manual sunroof which actually works quite nicely so um, and it's got an electric aerial which um, you don't really see much of those these days do you so yep all right that's it now um, I'll probably get this cleaned up and uh, do another video uh, in a few weeks time.
See ya. <laughs> Get low enough. <laughs> oh. And, uh, well, we can't shake hands, can we? No. That's the only problem. <laughs> so I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>